G'day there, this is Obi's first attempt to make a video about uh, BD5 bits and pieces. You can see um, sitting on the bench here is an existing B wing for a BD5. Standard uh, profile uh, ribs. Um, I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks um, the reshaping of the leading edge to make it the Obi1 profile. And uh, out on the bench I've got a few things set up to show you what it will be involved with. So, g'day there. So we're just going to go and have a look. This is my skin bay, well, where I work. Uh, we do all sorts of repairs to Herx and Orion bits at the moment. Right, here we've got the other wing uh, from the standard B wing. Still got the standard profiles on it. What I've done is I've laid out um, on the top um, the new profiles and the honeycomb ribs. So here we've got um, number one, one and two, if you can um, take to the other side there. Um, it needs a new rib in total, or you could just replace the um, leading edge. I've formed up a, a complete rib here, rubber pressed it. Um, so that's my former there. It's just a piece of MDF on the backside with a piece of heavy gauge aluminium to um, form the lightning holes and the stiffeners and you can see that's the shape of it there nicely formed with the cutout area ready for the for the fuel area there later on okay so that's how that's formed up you can see if you do a nice job on the rubber press and shrink a stretcher you can get a very very clean um, shape and the leading edge can actually be shaped right up to the leading edge there um, supporting the um, skin right at the tip. Okay, so here's the standard leading edge, uh, or standard profile. This can be taken right off and the new one replaced, or I could actually cut this here where the spar is and just replace the nose section on here, uh, which I would do um, if it were I wanted to save time. But I've also stiffened these to a thicker condition, uh, thicker skin than, than the standard ribs. So that will help to support the, um, the skin, the heaviest gauge skin better. Um, so we've gone up to 25 thou on those. Okay, so what I can do is I can trim off the leading edge just on, on the actual uh, flange down here, taking a little bit of clearance in here and fit the nose piece to it. So effectively we go there or I can replace the entire rib on the end of the spar. We come along to wing um, wing rib two and three, oh, sorry, three and four. This one here is surplus to my needs because I'm actually going to put in two honeycomb ribs. Here's my honeycomb, ready to go at seven inches. So I'll take out the middle one um, and then put each of these at seven inches. So one there and one here. So instead of being 10.5 inches from there to there, it will be seven inches from there to there, and there to there, and the existing rib here. So this is the other rib that I continue with. So we've got one and two, three and four. Three and four disappears. We've got that sitting over there. Don't need to make them. So that's good. I'll just cut that out altogether. Uh, five and six is this one. And I've got the formers here to make up five and six, similar to one and two, which I'll just be rubber pressing the um, area forward of the spar. And then my intermediate ribs again. So another set of honeycombs that I've cut out um, at seven inches spacing, taking this rib out. So now we've gone five and six, seven and eight, comes out all together, disappears, and it's replaced by these two honeycomb ribs. Then the next one, nine and 10 stays with it except with the new profile from um, the spar through to the nose. Okay, so it'll be replaced there. And now we've come to the end of our wet section here. Uh, so we've got the last bay to go. So, so that one there is seven and eight, nine and 10 disappears. Um, don't need it. Um, 
So we replace them with two other honeycomb at seven inches, and then we get to um, 13 and 14. Okay, so it's the last, it's the wet, the end of the wet wing. Okay, so once again, this one I leave solid when I form it in the rubber press. Um, I'll form the lightning holes to give it rigidity, but I don't need to punch the holes in the middle because it's a solid rib. And once again, I'll just cut off the flange and rivet the new rib to the end of that, and she'll be at the new shape. Similarly with the ones as we go further out, each of the ribs gets replaced uh, from the spar forward with the new shape. Behind the spar it's exactly the same shape so there's no need to replace it, um, saving a heap of work and a heap of aluminium as well because you've only got to do the forward sections which is pretty easy. And then the last one can be replaced in total uh, because you can get it onto the spar here. Um, so that's where we'll go with that one. So. To give you an idea of this change in profile, you can see sitting against there, it comes down lower, okay, so it's flatter on the bottom um, with more curvature on the top, so effectively it gives you a higher lift um, curvature, okay, so that's the intention of it. Uh, the beauty of it, it also um, reduces the um, or it increases the stall angle from four degrees through to 9.5. So it more than doubles the alpha that you can take before you start to get breakaway stall um, and makes the whole process getting into the stall a lot softer. So you get plenty of warning before it actually bites you in wing drops. Okay, and hopefully it won't ever get to the wing drop stage because you've gone a lot lower in speed and, and got a lot more feel. So that's the intention with the new wing and you can see that you can do it to an existing rib. Over the next few weeks, I'll actually be shaping each of those and um, I'll do some more videos later on. Okay, that's me for now. Cheers, bye-bye.